So hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Hunter Power Pack. Now this was recorded during early access so a huge thank you to EW for allowing me to take part in this early access. So like I said we're going to take a look at the Hunter Power Pack, the cosmetics that come along with it and also a quick look at the new loadouts feature. So starting off by taking a look at the new loadouts feature and honestly it's a really nice and simple to navigate new feature. All you have to do is put whatever you want into your inventory, then you'll be able to click the save option and be able to save it as a loadout. Now you start off with five loadout slots for free, that's really nice, and then you can purchase the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth and tenth slots for increasing amounts of cash starting at 1,000 going up to 5,000. So it's really cheap to be able to buy the other loadout slots, you don't need to worry about that at all. And and I think that that's a really, really nice feature. Then once you have made a loadout, you can rename your loadout slots. Now I'm not exactly sure how this will work on console as I was using a controller and there was no like menu keypad that came up or anything. So I'm not sure how that will work, but it's nice to be able to actually rename your loadouts. Now there are some cosmetics that come along with this weapon pack, starting off with the Medved Tiger blue paint which is just like a nice looking very dark blue paint as it's described. Then there is the Mississippi Acres dark grey paint, so a couple of nice new paint colours for your weapons which is nice to actually see. I didn't know that there were any new cosmetics coming with this pack so that's nice to actually see these were included. There's also Rancho Del Arroyo dark green paint, now it says dark green but this looks like brown to me so I don't know why it's called dark green I would have described that as a brown but that's what it's called then we have the Mississippi Acres brush spray which is a just a kind of patchy looking spray it's nice but I'm not sure it's my favorite of the cosmetics we've seen but again nice to see cosmetics coming along with this pack then my favorite cosmetic of this pack the Medved Tiger netting spray I really really like this I think it looks very very nice I think this is better than the Medved camo that we had previously so really happy about that then we have the Animal Stripes Matte Sand Tan Metals. Now this is just like a gold colour that you can apply to the metal of your gun and this is really exciting to see. I hope that we'll see more metal finishes actually coming out in future packs because yeah I actually like the ability to be able to change the metal colour to another metal colour and it not just be a different camo. Then we have the Parquet Fernando Woodland Camo to finish us off and it's just a very basic typical camo pattern and it is actually quite nice so that is nice to see in this pack as well. Like I said nice to see some cosmetics I had no idea that was coming along with the pack so I'm really happy to see that. Now taking a look in game before we test out the weapons and you can see the new UI there in the bottom left hand corner. There's no way to hide that UI at present which is something I hope that actually does change because I would like the ability to be able to hide that just because it's a bit more clutter on screen than I would like. Now to start off with we are going to test the new 338 and we're just going to test it out here on a couple of moose. That first shot I knew would be good, it was a nice broadside shot on that bull and I wanted to try and get a double, I was trying to get two which is what I would be doing with grinding, would be trying to go after multiple animals and so I took a shot at this cow as she was running away. It wasn't an optimal shot but she was going down pretty quickly so I knew I must have hit something good so we'll take a look at that in a moment. So starting off with the bull that we shot completely broadside at 144 meters and you can see the kind of penetration we're working with through that one lung but not enough to go through to the second lung. Now I really do wish the 338 had just a bit more power and was able to actually go through to the second lung. I really wish it could actually double lung a moose from that kind of range. I think it's a little bit unfortunate that it can't but it is still, you know, pretty good. It gave a medium bleed rate, same as the 300 would. So that was interesting to note. And honestly, it didn't feel like the moose went down a whole lot quicker to me than if I had used the 300 and got a similar result, which I feel is a little bit unfortunate. It may have gone down just very slightly quicker, but it wasn't really too noticeable in my opinion with a standard vital shot. Now this was something quite interesting to me with the 338. 
this shot here, the stomach liver shot, which obviously is not an optimal shot, I felt that the 338 actually did a pretty good job at bringing her down pretty quickly, even though it wasn't a great shot. And obviously when you're grinding, if you're having to shoot animals that are fleeing, that's kind of important if you can make sort of bad shots and still get them down pretty quickly. So I was pretty happy to see that it did actually bring her down fairly quickly, as you will have seen when I took the shot. It, I almost thought that I must have hit her in the back of one lung or something because of how quickly she did go down. So that was really interesting. Now, at this next spot, we are once again going to try and get two moves here with the new 338. We're going to start off by shooting this bull here that is actually broadside, and then hopefully I should be able to get a second shot at the bull that is actually currently turned faced away from us. Now, when I actually shoot there, you'll see that the second bull turns to face us, and that is something that will always happen. If you shoot and there is animals that are turned faced away from you like this, they will turn to face you once you take a shot and actually spook them. So it means that you can quite often get an opportunity and get a second shot there and that's something that I have been using while grinding so maybe that will be a useful tip if you're looking to get multiple animals down from a herd. Always shoot an animal that is broadside first and then hopefully you'll get an opportunity at any animals that are turned away not facing you as they try to turn around and face you before they flee. Now once again exactly what you'd expect just a single lung shot once again from the 338 brought him down fairly quickly but again not really too different I wouldn't think from the 300 but then this was quite interesting so this wasn't a great shot that we took at the second ball but you can see because the penetration was actually quite decent it got sort of the very outside part of the lung which then did bring him down I'm not sure if the 300 would necessarily have gotten as good penetration from the front there. I'm really quite pleased with actually what it did on this shot. Like I said, not entirely sure that the 300 would have done the same. But obviously, like I said, it wasn't an optimal shot at all. But standard broadside shot, it seems to do just about the same as the 300 in my opinion. Maybe just a slightly quicker kill time. But honestly, it's not that noticeable in my opinion. Now... Something I really wanted to test out was the 338 versus Kate Buffalo and see how good it would do against them. And that first shot there, broadside, I was super impressed. I decided to go for a heart shot on another oh. one as I was running to pick up the first one. And as you will have seen, it dropped in its tracks from a heart shot. So I was really impressed that the 338 got more than enough penetration there to get through to the heart. Then I ended up getting charged by this female while I was actually going to pick up the now two Kate Buffalo that we have shot and it brought her down pretty quickly from a vital hit and we'll take a look now at what kind of shot we actually got. So it's just a single lung shot but it did actually hit the shoulder blade and still get enough penetration to go through to the lung. Pretty sure that that's better than what the 300 would do even at this range which you know you can see distance just over five meters. So I was pretty impressed that it still brought her down nice and quickly, even with, again, sort of a suboptimal shot. You really want to not be hitting that shoulder blade. So again, I was quite impressed with that. It's not a whole lot of penetration, but more than enough to just get through to that one lung. Now taking a look at the broadside one that we actually shot first, and you can see the kind of penetration we're working with. It's not great. It's pretty okay. It's enough to get through to that lung by a few inches, but it's not, I would say, a whole lot more than the 300 at just a completely broadside shot. It's not that much better. Now, this isn't necessarily the gun, this is probably just the 338, as the ammo is the same for the 338 break action as it is for this, but I still think it should be performing a little bit better. But saying that, this shot really impressed me in terms of penetration. I did not expect it to go all the way through that flesh and then into a double lung heart shot. You can see the penetration, it's pretty impressive and I don't think the 300 would have necessarily been able to do this. I don't think I would have trusted it enough to go through all of that flesh and then be able to get into the heart and double lung. So I was actually really impressed with this. This was the most impressed I was actually by the 338 the whole time I tested it. 
this was by far the the best shot that it made in my opinion so i was actually really happy to see that a lot of the time like i said i am comparing it to the 300 because a lot of people are thinking that it might be a really good replacement for the 300 now but in a lot of cases especially when moose grinding i don't necessarily think it's going to make that huge of a difference so it's quite interesting to actually compare it on the cape buffalo where it seemed to do quite a bit better now moving on to the next gun and we're going to be taking a look at what the new 7mm bolt action is like. As you will have seen it brought that first stag down pretty quickly and we're going to take another shot here at this stag that's actually trotting away and as you will see it hits him and it brings him down very very quickly. This might be a new good weapon for red deer grinding. It seems to have plenty of power to bring them down quick enough and obviously with it being a bolt action you can get those follow up shots. It does does bring them down with a double lung shot as you can see here if you can get a nice broadside shot and even this shot which was slightly quartered away even is not perfectly broadside it was still perfectly able to get through to both lungs and bring him down really really quickly the power of the seven mil there really doing a fantastic job against the red stags and like i said this could be a new good weapon for grinding red deer and maybe for whitetail it was an absolute beast against the whitetail i tested it against as you will probably expect seeing how well it does here against some red deer here you can see we actually get a liver and double lung shot Again, not the maybe best shot, it's quite low and it is, you know, sort of quartered angle. However, it's still more than capable of getting plenty of penetration, getting double lung and getting the liver in there. Honestly, the new 7mm is a beast. This Obviously, it's the same ammo as the 7mm break action in game, but with it having the bolt action and it, you know, having three rounds... It's a really impressive gun. Honestly, probably my favourite gun of the pack. It is just an absolute beast. Now, here again, I'm trying to take down multiple red deer again with the 7mm and got the first one. Unfortunately, the second shot was a clean miss and I'm kind of glad because I think a hind ducked in front of the stag I was trying to shoot, but managed to drop a second stag as he was trotting away there once again. And once again, just taking a look, completely fine getting a double lung shot broadside on this stag. You can see it's just getting through to that second lung here. And again, it's not a perfect, perfect broadside shot. But again, still absolutely plenty to bring this guy down really, really quickly. It's really impressive, this gun. Like I said, the 7mm has such a lot of power. And when you combine it with it being a bolt action and it having those three rounds... I think that this is going to be a really good grinding weapon and I think a lot of people will actually choose this one just because, like I said, it is an absolute beast. I'm seriously impressed by it. More impressed by the 7mm than I was by the 338, honestly, which I'm actually quite surprised by. Now, I did actually drop this second stag with a heart shot, but once again, you can see the penetration. Double lung heart shot. It's just absolutely perfect for shooting red deer. It is so brilliant. Even if you just get double lung, they go down super quick. So it's really fantastic. Now, finally, we are going to test the 308. We are also going to test that against red deer because the 308 is a good weapon for red deer if you want to use it against them. And you can see the kind of time that it takes to actually kill one with the 308 shot. Now, once again, it is the same ammo as the 308 AR that is in game. So it is going to be comparable to that. But obviously, this just is the bolt action version. And as you will be able to see, we managed to get the first stag, then a second stag. And able to get onto this third stag here once he actually settles down and stops running at full pace able to get onto him and actually put a third shot out and get this stag down as well so managed to get three there no problem at all so once again it's a good weapon and like i said it's going to be comparable to the ar that's already in game because it is using the same ammo so basically the difference is going to be whether you prefer using the bolt action or the ar if you're doing grinding you're probably going to prefer the ar just because of the speed of it i would imagine but the bolt action is there as a nice option for people who would prefer to hunt with the bolt action. And the bolt action is really, really nice. And as you saw, it is more than capable of doing really well. So if you would prefer to use the bolt action, it's definitely a viable option. You can see it gets plenty of penetration. It does plenty good enough. Just takes a little bit longer to kill than, say, the 7mm does. 
but it is more than good enough to actually take down multiple animals from a herd and to do it pretty effectively as well. Managed to actually get double lung here on this smaller stag. Now this one was a little bit actually closer because they kind of ran towards me. So, you know, take that as you will. But you can see the penetration there is actually pretty good on this little tiny stag. And yeah, I'm pretty impressed by how it actually did there against this group of red deer. Like I said, if you wanted to use it as a grinding rifle, I would say it's probably more than capable. It's just maybe not the most efficient choice. And then we'll take a look at this third stag. Similar distance, 116 meters. Once again, a double lung shot. A bit high in the lungs, just below the spine. But once again, plenty of penetration gets through and gets double lung. So you can kind of get an idea of what the penetration from this weapon is like. It's pretty good. And like I said, it is going to be pretty much the same as the 308 AR that's in game because they use the exact same ammo. It's just whether you prefer using the bolt action or the AR. Obviously, like I said, the AR is going to be quicker to shoot. But that is because it's an AR versus the bolt action. So I think it's just going to come down to which you prefer actually shooting and using. And it's nice to be able to have the option between the two. Now, if I could summarize this pack in like one sentence, I would say you come for the 338 and stay for the 7mm. Because I think the 338 is the gun that a lot of people are interested in in this pack. It was certainly the one I was most interested in because grinding is such a big thing at the moment and especially moose grinding for the moose great one. So a lot of people, myself included, were really interested in what, what it was going to perform like, especially against moose. And, you know, would it be significantly better than the 300? Honestly, I don't feel that it did do significantly better than the 300 would, at least against Moose. I feel like it was quite a bit noticeably better than the 300 against Cape Buffalo. But even still, even with the Cape Buffalo, on a broadside shot, a standard broadside shot, it didn't seem to get a whole lot more penetration than the 300 actually would. So I don't know. I It's a good weapon and it could be a good choice for grinding, but I don't necessarily think that it's the star of the show in this weapon pack like I thought it would be. However, the bolt action at 7mm is really, really fantastic. It was so good against those red deer. It was really, really fantastic. I was really impressed. And like I said, with it having that power and it being a bolt action with three rounds, it's definitely, I would say, going to be a good grinding weapon. And like I said, against Whitetail as well, it was just absolutely dropping them on the spot, completely annihilating them. And seeing as people tend to grind Red Deer and Whitetail, those were the couple of species I decided to test it against. And it just did such a fantastic job. So I can definitely see that being a really well-used weapon. And even if you don't want to use it for grinding, I can see that being a really good staple in people's loadouts for just casual hunting because it has so much power and then you have the ability to put a follow-up shot in if needed if say the first shot doesn't go well so like i said in my opinion you come for the 338 but stay for the 7mm. The 7mm is my favourite gun out of this pack, honestly, which I didn't expect to be saying. I wish the 338 had some more power to bring down Moose a bit quicker and, you know, get a bit more penetration on a broadside Cape Buffalo than it does. I just wish it had just that bit more punch to it. And I think it's unfortunate that it doesn't, but then it's, you know, it is the same ammo as the 338 break action that is already in game. But nevertheless, I still wish that it had a bit more power to it. So that is my opinion on the guns. Also, I'd like to add, I am really happy to see that there are some cosmetics coming along with the pack as well. I think that's a nice touch. And I, like I said, I didn't even know about that until I actually saw the post on Steam about the Hunter Power Pack. So I think that that's really brilliant as well to see some cosmetics included with the pack. And yeah, it's, it's a good weapon pack. It, I probably would recommend it, probably more for the 7 mil, other you know, more than anything else. But it is a good weapon pack at the end of the day and I am quite impressed with it, especially the 7mm. But that is going to be it for this video, so I really hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the performance of all of these rifles, which one you think is going to be your favourite. And I'll be really interested to hear because, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to hear what people have to say about this weapon pack. Like I said, I really thought that the 338 would be the star of this weapon pack. But now after actually testing them out and actually playing with them, 
I think the 7mm really is the star of this weapon pack, honestly, in my opinion. So I'll be really keen to hear what people think of all three of these rifles and which one, you know, you think that is going to be in your loadouts. And yeah, just let me know. So that is going to be it for this one. So thank you so, so much for watching and for all your support as always. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.